different people, and most of us are on Medicare or Medicaid, mm -hmm. and our concern is the Ryan Bill, and we'd like the congressman to have a town hall. We want a town hall. We haven't had any, preferably middle or lower bucks, because that's where your seniors and your Medicaid people are. Specifically on the Ryan budget or on any on kind Medicare, of Medicaid, Medicaid, and Medicaid. why okay. and why he's why? back? Why yeah. he backed the Ryan? Why is he supporting the Ryan bill, which counter. is going to do so many? Okay. And actually, it would be a series a series of town halls because yes. he took the vote without any consultation with the constituents. And, and why is he putting yeah. out literature saying he supports Medicare? Well, he puts the care in Medicare, but he's taking care out of Medicare. He's not putting care in it. <laughs> And at the same time, he's uh, browbeating people on the health care bill, making that sound like that's threatening Medicare when in fact it's the other way around. It's the Ryan bill that's going to do more to hurt Medicare than the health care bill. Why, why Chris, do you want to chance to more say important something? Than us? Oh, you haven't said anything. Why are these wealthy people more important? To Just make sure you Fitzpatrick than people like me and Jerry. That's what I want him to explain to me. Well, he'll have this a makes town me very hall. angry. He'll have a town hall and we'll get our chance. chance. Well, well, a series of town halls. I, just want to <laughs> I, I worked in a hospital office in 1965, and I saw the inception of Medicare. And before that, what happened to us, people would come into the hospital, old folks, and they didn't have anything. They were retired. They were old. They were sick. And what would happen is the hospital would eat that cost. So what do you think is going to happen if they do away with Medicare? People can't pay for, for their medical bills because it's going to end. That's where it's going to leave. So then we're going to be back to square one, like we were before the health care plan. And I also want to know why he's demonizing the health care plan when the Republican Party had nothing to offer. And this is what they're offering? Or what does he have that's going to, that's going to replace Medicaid? He's going to have to answer that question. I mean, he's sitting on private insurance. He's not worrying. He, he's, he doesn't care if about us. The congressman us. has to go to the doctors. He gets to go. If he has to go to the hospital, he's not losing his house because he has no Medicaid. Medicaid. You know, these people are going to lose it and have nothing. So yeah. what? Would they? Do they get to come live with the congressman? I guess not. <laughs> right. <laughs> really? That's he's, got, he's got six kids already, so I don't right. know. His house is a little six packed. Right. You all so. have private medical insurance. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't affect him. Look, you know, let's put the congressman on Medicaid and see how fast, if it was his only option, he would keep insurance. I don't think he'd be unfunding the program. I don't, I don't think, think he'd he would be, either. I don't think he'd be turning it into a block grant that the, the states can crush. Jerry came out, and he's, he's dual eligible, Medicaid, Medicare, and happy with, now I'm putting words in his mouth, so I'll be quiet. I'm happy with my Medicare, Medicare. This is the people the congressman needs to face before he makes these kind of votes. It's not fair to he sit in an office and vote without talking to the people that it's directly affecting. And that's what we want. And that we want him to face the people. Yep. And it's not just Jerry, but no, thank you so much, but it's Eleanor uh -huh. on Medicare, David, dual eligible, Barb, her son. Um, My son. <laughs> your son and you. And, and it's all of us because we're all getting there uh -huh. someday. Yeah. Life. And yet, these these people, these rich people, like she was talking about the yachts, it just, it, they should pay their share. It's nothing it's, to them. You know, they they could pay more more taxes. You know, and they they they're just making a killing because that's what we're seeing. They're, they they only care about the rich, people like me and Jerry. You know, just. Fend for yourself. All, yeah, yeah believe me, David. We're all. I don't think any of us are in the top one percent, which is no. where the gross. How many are part Very of the few. benefits, right, Very of those tax? And, and David brings up an excellent point because, as as it says in this letter that I'm going to leave with you, um, 
this Ryan plan pr makes permanent all the Bush tax cuts, right. every single one of them. So when the congressman goes around with this town, town hall he does, and he's talking about how terrifying the deficit is, and I asked him, well, then why don't we give back our tax cuts? Why don't we just not give back the tax cuts, but why don't we stop the tax cuts? I'd be more than happy to do that. If it would get you to be quiet about the deficit so we could talk about some real things, fine, take my tax cut back. But um, he doesn't want to do that. So what does, so $4 trillion, $4 trillion in tax cuts and paid for by ending Medicare and Medicaid. That's Chris is what Congressman Fitzpatrick has, has to hear is that this is going to impact on him politically. It would be very dangerous for him to support this. He won a he did support vote over Patrick, Patrick uh, Murphy. And, and, and if, if this gets, if he doesn't face and honor his commitment to hold these town meetings to, with people who need to tell him their story, uh, I'd like to think the best of him that he just doesn't realize. He hasn't had a chance to talk to Jerry. He hasn't had a chance to talk to David. He hasn't had a chance to talk to any number of the community college students that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, and that he has no conception of what the, what is happening. Uh, you travel as a politician in a rarefied group of people. You get a very narrow view of the world and you get a set ideology and you stick with that. What he's missing is the reality of the human lives that are involved. If you need help in getting a town hall set up, I'm a teacher at the community college, I can get you one set up at any time, at, any, at the Lower Bucks campus, at the Middle Bucks campus. Well, it's very easy to do. Well, we'd all be glad to be helpful, but he needs to hear that. And the word, message you need to get back to him isn't uh, that, that some people who hold a very different view than he were here, but but that we really believe he has failed to listen to the people he needs to listen to. And until he listens to them, whatever position he takes, that's on his shoulders. But he needs to listen to these people. He needs to hear them in a in a face to face confrontation. Face to face chance. Not a confrontation actually. A face to face chance for him, even less than a dialogue. A chance for him to hear what people are dealing with, what people are suffering from. Well, I don't think he has a clue of what that is.